This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to this training of the local Safe Environment Coordinators. I want to thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to view this training video. I'm Rosie Franska, and I am the assistant to the director of the Office of Child and Youth Protection with the Diocese of Springfield, Cape Girardeau. Bill Holtmeyer is the director of this office. As the local safe environment coordinator for your parish or school, you will be an integral part of our mission to protect the children and all vulnerable individuals within this diocese. You are our boots on the ground, and we would not be able to do our job without you. Please know that we appreciate all the work you do for us. Your calls and questions are always welcome, so never hesitate to contact Bill or myself with any questions or concerns. To begin with, I'd like to explain why you are needed in your parish or school. In June of 2002, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops created the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People in response to the sex abuse crisis in our church. The Charter has been revised twice in 2011 and more recently in 2018. It is a comprehensive set of procedures for addressing allegations of sexual abuse of minors by Catholic clergy. The Charter also includes guidelines for reconciliation, healing, accountability, and prevention of further acts of abuse. As part of this, that process, in June of 2003, the Office of Child and Youth Protection at the USCCB, now called the Secretariat of Child and Youth Protection, began an audit process of all dioceses throughout the United States. The annual audit is used to determine if the diocese is currently compliant with the practices required by the Charter. As a diocese, we must document that all clergy, employees, and volunteers who regularly supervise children or vulnerable adults have met the following requirements. They need to attend the required education and training, currently the Protecting God's Children for Adults, uh, the Virtus training at www virtusonline.org. We do have an online option which is now available. If you have any questions about how to access that, you're welcome to give me a call. The um, applicant must also read, sign, and submit a, the Diocesan Code of Conduct annually. Um, as you may know, the new forms usually come out and are released around July 1st of each year. A person would also need to submit, complete and submit the background disclosure and authorization form so that the required criminal background screening may be completed. Something to be aware of is that until an individual creates a Virtus account, we are unable to record their code of conduct or order their background screening because we use the Virtus system as our diocesan safe environment database. The background check vendor we employ uses the Virtus ID to tie the background check re results to the person's account. All clergy, employees, and all volunteers who are in charge of programs with minors, such as PSR, youth ministry, etc., are all required to read monthly Virtus Safe Environment Bulletins. We must also demonstrate that the safe environment education is presented to our children. Each parish and school is to have a local safe environment coordinator appointed by the parish. That is why you are here. 
you are the person who is responsible for maintaining the safe environment records and assuring compliance with diocesan policy at your parish or school. It is only with your assistance that we are able to give an accurate report to the USCCB auditors. It takes a team and you are a vital part of this team. But now you're probably wondering, how am I supposed to do this? I hope I can help you out with that. To begin with, each August or September, check with the parish and school office to obtain a list of all the employees. This includes even part-time employees, the pastor's housekeeper, even though they probably have no direct contact with minors. Then um, contact all people who are in charge of programs involved with minors or vulnerable adults to get a list of all the adult volunteers. That includes PSR directors, scout leaders, youth ministry directors, youth choir directors, etc. We ask that those folks who bring communion to or who minister to those who are in nursing homes, hospitals, or the homebound to be in compliance with diocesan safe environment requirements also. The next thing you would that um, you would need to do is once you have obtained your list of names, the next step is to confirm whether or not each person has completed the diocesan safe environment requirements. This can be done from your Virtus account. You may look up an individual by name or by running a parish school master report. Let me show you examples of each. Okay, we will go over to the Virtus account and you would need to log in to your Virtus account. And after logging in, click on the administration tab and just put in the last name of the person you're looking for. Um, I'm just gonna pick myself because I'm here and you'll see that um, here I am and by the way uh, you all have the power to search individually for anyone within the diocese um, let's just say I wasn't looking for myself but uh, I knew that there was a Franska that that should have had an account and uh, so I'm going to click here at show inactive users and click go again. And there's a whole list of other people. This is my son, Ben the fourth, and his account is inactive. And uh, I can look up and see when he was inactivated uh, by me in 2008. And uh, he had, this is his contact inf information at the time. He, that was before we started doing background checks on everyone. Uh, he, we didn't do a code at that time. And here is the training that he did. Uh, and if you want to see everything all at once, this is a handy tab. It's the summary tab and you'll see uh, this is the location he was associated with, uh, the most recent trainings, the training bulletins, um, background check and code of conduct. If you wanna look up the whole parish at once, then you would run a master report. So from your administration tab, you could, you click administration tab, go to master report, local level, report to screen and click that. Choose your location and um, 
I will just choose um, the Catholic Center. Now, you will only be able to run reports for the locations for which you are responsible, so you won't get this list. You'll only have the, excuse me, the list of people um, of the locations that you're responsible for. But I've chosen the Catholic Center. Normally, this report will automatically only show active users. So that's what we're going to run for right now. Automatically gives us the name, the status of each person. So we're going to choose protect, protecting God's children for adults. And um, the, the online training is the same. It's going to show up at the same if, if we do this. So, um, and then we'll need to do American check, background check, and required documents. Uh, we've already retired the 2019-20 code of conduct, but um, there is a way if you want to run a report with that, you can call me and I can I can tell you how to do that. Um, You'll see here the Missouri State Highway Patrol background check. That is done only if there is a problem and we do a little extra looking. But all you're going to be concerned about is American checked standard and then the current code of conduct and the protecting God's children for adults. And you would just run the hit run report to screen. And you'll see everyone's name here and um, some people put will select a location and I don't know why they selected Catholic Center um, he obviously maybe he's going to take a training here well let's just click his name and see or well, he didn't sign up for a training here this would be where he would indicate what training he wanted to attend. So um, he's kind of in no man's land for now. So we'll click the back arrow. Click on my name again. Well, first of all, the reports. These are the, you can see the codes of conduct that the Catholic Center, most everyone has read. Uh, we've all had our background checks. And um, our uh, training, except for this gentleman here. So um, we'll go back now, click the back arrow if you want to see what happens when you click the uh, inactive users. We'll just click that, hit report to screen, and you'll notice more people show up. There is also an option, let's unclick the show inactive users. There is also an option that you can run it to Excel. And um, that way you can, you'll have a base to start your, your employee volunteer list each year. And I will show you what happens when that comes up. Well, that did not work out like it was supposed to. Let's go back to run report to Excel. I click no and I think we wanted to click yes. And there it is. There's your list. Um, I did want to mention that um, you will see this caution button sometimes and it may have contact SEC. 
that means um, that the pastor or principal should contact our office regarding whether or not this person should be supervising minors. Most often that caution is on there because of something like repeated driving offenses and we don't believe that that person should be considered a safe driver for transporting children. It could also mean something serious, and if that is the case, your pastor or principal should have been notified and is aware of the caution on the account. Uh, but uh, this, this report, this Excel report, will be good for you to use as a starting base for your list, okay? Let's get back to the PowerPoint. Okay, and here I am talking about, uh, you would need to maintain an Excel, uh, a spreadsheet or an Excel file for all parish or school employees and volunteers. The spreadsheet example is available on the diocesan website, and I'll go over that shortly. It should be kept on a church or school computer if possible, and the list is to be maintained each for each audit year, July 1st through June 30th. I wanted to show you the difference between the school um, employee volunteer list and the parish volunt employee volunteer list. This is the parish list. You'll notice in that last column, all that is available is the employee and volunteer. And the school list, they have educator, employee, and volunteer. The USCCB defines an educator as a salary as salaried teachers, principals, and administrators working at a Catholic school. If you are recording data for a parish, do not use educator in the last column. Yes, a catechist is an educator, but for audit purposes, they are considered volunteers, even if that person is a certified teacher. Again, the use of educators is for the school only. And please include only those employees and volunteers who were active during the audit period. There are many people who take the Virtus training who are not currently involved in ministry. And then you must submit, we need you to submit that list along with the report of completion each calendar year on April 15th. And then another thing that you would be doing regularly for us is um, you, throughout the year, you will receive background authorizations, codes of conduct from employees. If your facility has a fax machine, we ask that you, those forms are faxed to this secure fax number, 888-820-6000. Emails cannot be guaranteed confident cannot be guaranteed confidentiality. Let me qualify that by stating that the following documents can be emailed because they do not include someone's social security number, codes of conduct, reports of completion, and list of employees and volunteers. Mailing documents via the Post office is the next best option for sending confidential items to our office. We need you to maintain a safe environment file, keep original background disclosure and authorization forms, codes of conduct in a secure location at the parish or school. It's helpful if you keep all the paperwork in alphabetical order by last name. This is the report that is due on April 15th of each year. It's the report of completion, and it is to be submitted with the list of employees and volunteers. Remember back at the beginning, I said we had to show that we offered 
children a safe environment training? Well, this report's purpose is to record the Virtus training for children attending PSR classes or children in Catholic schools grades K through 12. Every parish, mission, or school is required to submit the form with the pastor's signature, even if there are no religious education classes held at your location. This form is to be included with the list of employees and volunteers. The report of completion forms are on the website. The PSR director in the parish or the school principal are usually the persons who record the information on the report of completion. This is a statement that um, is to be included in parish and school handbooks or parent communications each school year. Parishes and schools are, to, are not to send a permission form or a special letter to parents regarding the safe environment letters. The opt-out form is not to be automatically sent home each year. It is used only if a parent tells the parish that they do not want their child trained, and after a parent has reviewed the lessons and spoken to the pastor about why they do not want their child trained. This announcement may be adapted to fit your parish or school situation. This announcement is to be printed in the parish and school bulletin or newsletter at least twice each year. Keep a copy of the bulletin in the safe environment file and send a copy of the bulletin to the Office of Child and Youth Protection. Parishes are encouraged to print this announcement regularly during the year. One way to uh, report violations and concerns is using the TIPS online reporting system. It's accessible through the diocesan website homepage at www.dioscg.org. And it's also on the Office of Child and Youth Protection homepage. And it, I believe it's on most parish and school websites. If a parish charters a boy or a Girl Scout troop or similar group, the parish is responsible for that troop. Therefore, the leaders are required to be in compliance with diocesan safe environment policy, even if they are not parishioners or Catholic. Compliance includes attending a Virtus training, background screening, and signing a code of conduct. This is in addition to whatever the Scout organization requires. Parishes may ask the group to reimburse the parish for the cost of the background check. Scout leaders are considered to be volunteers and are not required to read monthly bulletins. Knights of Columbus. Knights of Columbus members are required to be in compliance with diocesan safe environment policies if they are regularly engaged in activities where minors and vulnerable adults are present. Each night should follow the same procedures as a parish volunteer, Virtus training, background check, and an annual code of conduct. You'll notice that we also have a uh, code of conduct for minors in grades 12, 7 through 12 who work with other minors. Uh, that would be kids who volunteer at Camp Renewal who are under the age of 18, um, high school kid who volunteers in the parish child care, uh, PSR program, vacation Bible schools. This um, form is really intended more as an educational tool for teens and their families. Um, Note that our office does not keep track of these forms. It's to be sent home to parishes to parents to review and sign with their child. Now, I'd like to show you the diocesan website and the Office of Child and Youth Protection page.
Okay, there's our bishop. And I told you that the tips line was available here. If you'll scroll down, you'll see that. Um, you can just click here and it'll take you to the tips and you, you just fill out the form as it goes, you know, it'll prompt you as to what you need to fill out. And this is new this year. Um, if you have an allegation against our bishop, there's a new way to report that as well that will go to um, national folks. Okay, now to go to our um, Child and Youth Protection page, you go up to Ministries and Offices and click on Child and Youth Protection. And there we are. You'll see just general information, contact information for Bill and I. There's our toll-free fax number. Um, this is just, um, we put this up after we started offering the online training, um, how to change your Veritas registration from a live to an online training. And this is just how do I register if you click here, you'll get uh, the training schedule for Virtus. Um, here's the charter that I was talking about, the newest revision. And this is a good um, resource, frequently asked questions about the charter. And uh, this is a video that um, the communications office did about our office and I, that would be a good thing for you to watch. Let me show you here. These are forms. You'll see the parish report of completion, the school report of completion, um, the codes of conduct in English, Spanish, and we have it in Vietnamese this year. And here are the two codes of conduct for minors in English and Spanish and the background authorization forms in English and Spanish. That's in your forms tab. In your resource tab, there are, this is our safe environment policy. Please be familiar with that. Uh, you uh, will need to refer the, to that several times, I'm sure. As part of the safe environment policies, we have a couple of documents that we pulled out of that, and one of them is the policy and guidelines for the use of technology, email, and social media. Here's a media release form. Um, the safe environment, the safe student policy addressing harassment, discrimination, and violence. And um, you'll just you'll find a lot of good resources here. Okay, uh, if you need to file a complaint, this is the procedure to do that. And if you have a new employee or a volunteer, here are the steps that you would need to have them go through. And training. Um, Now, normal, this is the children's training. You know, the adults are going to have to do the Virtus training. Um, but next year, you will be doing lesson five. We just, they, the new revised versions are not available, but they will be on this website as soon as I can get them on. Okay. Now, you're still going, hmm. I have no idea how I'm going to do this job. I cannot, it's too much information. And um, so I created a little page for you. And you'll notice at the top, there's the safe environment procedures, all of those forms that you might need, you'll probably need to refer to. This is the training video um, that I am recording now, and uh, you'll be able to access it here uh, when it is available.
and each year we have the local we send out instructions and you will receive one again this year. Uh, this is what is going out this year. I'll go ahead and click on that. It's a letter and basis, basically everything that we have talked about is in this letter. Um, even down to the bulletin announcements that we ask you to put in or the handbook announcements. Um, there are the Excel forms that are linked. Um, you can do it in PDF or Excel. The information on Scouts, all of that stuff is, is in there. So please refer to that as you go along. Okay. Um, Then here's a reminder on how to check the individual's Virtus records. And I'll show you a quick example of how it looks. I mean, it's just screenshots with step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do. And let's go back here. And there's instructions for making a master report. There are also step-by-step -step instructions. If, you've, if you have to read monthly bulletins and you don't know how to access it, there are step-by-step -step instructions. Suppose someone is at uh, your parish or school who just does not have access to computers and internet, but they are required to read bulletins. You would click here um, and it would tell you how to print off a monthly bulletin for that person. Then you would just have them read it, answer the questions, sign and date it. And here are instructions for how to look up their account and record that bulletin for them. And this is how to register for a safe environment training. And for someone who, um, already had registered for a live training, but uh, now because of COVID-19, they want to do a, an online session. This is how they change their registration from live to online. Again, we've got the parish report of completions, school report of completions, um, code of codes of conduct, the code of conduct for minors, the background disclosure forms, the opt-out forms, the parish uh, employees volunteer list, uh, the school list, and then here's just some miscellaneous stuff. How do I access children's Virtus lessons? Uh, it gives you information on how to access it from your Virtus account. And, uh, and then as always, they will be available over on this page. So, um, like I said, I will update that to Lesson 5 as soon as it's available from Virtus. Okay, uh, we're getting close. Um, like I said, just remember to utilize this page as much as you can because that's going to answer a lot of your questions. If a person has an, an inactive account and it has been inactive for over a year and their background check is older than three years, then uh, we require that a new background authorization form be submitted. And they would also need to submit a new code of conduct before we would reactivate that account. Uh, Virtus training for those about to turn 18, uh, they should not really be taking that training any sooner than two months before their 18th birthday. This is really geared towards adults and uh, we just don't want to have them taking it too soon. 
Um, often you'll get someone moving in from outside the diocese um, and they took Virtus training at their previous diocese. We can transfer that training. Uh, you would need to get uh, contact our office with the individual's name, previous location, approximate date of training, location of training. Now, there is one caveat with that. If their previous training is older than seven years, we request that the individual retake the training in our diocese. And uh, we would need them to also submit a background authorization form and a code of conduct. Um, who is required to read monthly um, online training bulletins? All parish and school employees, even if they have no contact with children, and any volunteer in charge of programs involving PSR involving children, PSR directors, or youth group directors. Uh, there are ways to read your monthly bulletins, and you can see that on the uh, safe, local safe environment webpage. Uh, you can do it online from your account or printed bulletins, as I said earlier. And I've already covered that. Uh, like I said, just print it off, have them read, date, and sign it, and then you would record their bulletins. Uh, keep um, track of those bulletins in a file for them. It, it, somewhere in the your safe environment file, you might have a folder just for them with their bulletins. Each parish and school is to prominently display in public gatherings a poster distributed by the diocesan office. Um, contact the office for additional posters. This is a mandatory requirement. So uh, look around your facility if you need some, uh, like in social halls, at entrances, gyms, those kind of things. So. Um, just contact us if you need some more. We have them available in English and Spanish. Always log out of your Virtus account at the end of the day. Otherwise, you might be using an out-of-date version of the Virtus database. Okay, well, I want to thank you so much for the time you took to view this training. Please email me with the name of the patron saint of abuse victims, Saint Germain Cousin. Also, send a tip from this training that you think you will use most often and indicate if there was some topic that should have been presented in this training that was not covered. This will allow us to keep track of who has viewed the video as well as know what topics we should add to the next update. We will contact you about about your individual questions. Again, thank you so much and you have a wonderful day.